Hey everybody, this is Ebony and welcome back to my channel, Everything Eb. As you can see by the title, finally y'all, finally, 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 I have my date. I have my date. It is next Friday, February the 5th. Yes, next Friday. February the 5th. Do y'all know that is literally six days away from today? Today is Saturday and it's next Friday. Six days. So I have a few things I want to get into um, and talk about how I'm feeling actually having my date. It's crazy. But anywho, let's just get into the video. Thank you for watching. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. If you ran across this video and you have not yet subscribed, please do so. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I upload a video. Because it's here now, y'all. We rocking and rolling. And I plan to take y'all along this journey with me um, as much as possible. So if you don't want to miss none of these videos, hit that bell and subscribe. Go ahead. All right, so here we go. I do have notes, like always, to the side. Ignore my background. This is my work desk. That's my personal desk, crafting and whatever. And you can see my planner and all that stuff, but that's okay. Um, just ignore all that. So I have notes here on my desk that I am going to kind of go over to kind of keep me on point and make sure I don't forget anything that I wanted to go over in this video. So uh, if I'm looking down, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at my notes. So yeah. So the first thing, like I said, I finally got a surgery date. So um, I know I told y'all the last video that I had my approval or whatever. That was on January the 12th. Um, and I was just trying to be patient. Remember, I was like, I don't want to bug them. I don't want to be that, you know, patient or whatever. So I'm just trying to be patient and wait it out until they call me. And, um... They never did. So I decided last week, well, I had called, I think, the Friday before, not yesterday, but last Friday, left a message for the scheduler. The phone, I left trying twice. For some reason, it kept hanging up. I don't know if the messages went through or what. So I gave her Monday to call me. She didn't call me. Tuesday, I called. It was a long hold, but guess who answered? I didn't even get the voicemail. Guess who answered? Baby, I'm acting like we old friends. Hey, Katie. I don't know if you got my message this last week, but this Ebony. Blah, 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 you know. So she like, you have your surgery approved? I'm like, yes, it was approved on the 12th. She put me a hole. She came back. She was like, okay. Are you able to or open to having your surgery on the on February the 5th? I'm like, now y'all know I've been wanting this date, wanting to get it over with. But baby, when she said less than two weeks away, I was like, uh, of course I was like, absolutely. But inside, I'm like, dang, that's close, girl. Let me tell y'all, girl, guy, whoever watching this, I start sweating on, I don't start sweating, I'm doing this. I'm like, oh my goodness, it is real, baby. It's here. So... <clears throat> on that call, um, she scheduled my like my one week fuck my surgery, told me everything, what time to be there and all that. She scheduled my one week follow up uh post op appointment and also my I think six weeks or something or one month, I can't remember. Off the top of my head. All right, sorry for the interruption, y'all, but my mama called, and you know when mama called, you got to get it. So, um, I had to see what she wanted. So, I'm going to turn this ringer off, though, and hopefully anybody else call, I can ignore it. So, anyway, wherever I left off at, so she scheduled me for my um, surgery. It's at 2 o'clock. She told me I had to be there by 12. She was telling me everything. You know, they reiterate everything, so, like, nothing to drink before or after midnight or whatever, but I get into that. So then, um, she also scheduled me for my appointment, um, like my class, final class or whatever with the nurse before surgery, which was Zoom, a Zoom class. That was yesterday. I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit about that. 
And then as soon as I hung up from her, like not even five minutes later, I get a call from the anesthesia office, which she did tell me I would begin to call. And the lady was like, she didn't leave us any time. We need to get you, we need to get you in here tomorrow. Um, you know, because you have to meet with the anesthesia team and then you also have to get your C test, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and we need time for those results to come back. And I was like, is it any way I can come a little later? I wasn't even really pressed. Like if I couldn't come another day, I would have preferred to, to give me some time. You know, it's literally tomorrow I work, you know, I'm at work taking these phone calls. But she was like, no, we have to have, you know, time to get your C results back and this and that. And you, you have to come in tomorrow. I said, well, can I come any later in the day? You know, trying to come after work or whatever. I mean, I get off pretty early. I get off at 3.15. So that's still even a little business hours. You know, I'm like, can I come after that? She's like, no, no, you got to get in here. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So I kept that appointment. I get there. I told y'all the being put to sleep. The being intubated and the C test. Now, I've had the, uh, the C test before, but I don't like it. It's terrible. I'd rather you draw my blood or anything. Like, it got to be another one they can test for that. But, anywho, so I did that. That was Tuesday. All of these appointments were made. Wednesday, I went to that appointment. So, um, I'm going to get into that, but I forgot to tell y'all my uh, stats. But since I'm getting into this appointment, I might as well go ahead and tell you. Um, so that was this past Wednesday and it took like two hours and 45 minutes. That appointment was super long, but, um, when I got there, I did weigh. So let me go ahead and tell my stats and then y'all know my goal. So my highest weight and now I'm five one, my highest weight was 324 pounds when I started this journey with the medical weight loss doctor you know at the beginning of my six months my weight was 319 my last weight i think i told you on my last video was 281 my weight at this appointment the other day was 278 so i lost another three pounds which leaves four pounds and i know that's eight but y'all know what i mean four pounds to my goal four pounds um four more pounds just and I, like I said, I don't have to do it, but I would like to accomplish that 50 pounds on my own before surgery. I would be extremely happy. But either way, it's here, it's going down. I'm excited. So anyway, I was 278. So I get to the appointment I meet with. I mean, I don't know how many people, a couple of different nurses. We're going over all of my medications. They tell you, you know, what you can take the day of and what you cannot. Um, they tell you um, everything that's going to happen as far as you being put to sleep and put the breathing tube uh, placed in your throat or whatever. I'm letting them know out, off the flip. I am in, I'm low. I seem calm, but I'm low key freaking out about all of this inside. So they telling me, you know, no, we do this all the time. We're going to take good care of you. They're actually going to give you something in your IV ahead of time that'll calm you down before you actually get into the surgery, the operating room, and they put you to sleep, like for real, for real. So I'm like, okay, I'm just hoping or whatever that, that, um, like I was saying, it's not even really the surgery itself that, has me concerned or has me nervous or whatever it's actually the being put to sleep and the breathing tube going down my throat that's that's it yeah um so yeah that was that and then they gave me i had to get my last bit of my blood work you get a nick you have to do a urine test because they want to test you for nicotine and then you get blood work. They want to see how your kidneys function. And a couple other things I don't really remember. But you get, like I said, a couple tubes of blood taken. You got to give them urine for the nicotine test. And I don't know if this is everywhere. But you get a nicotine test with them. And then you also get a nicotine test the day of surgery. And they made it plain and clear that they will. Uh, I don't care if you hooked and you in the bed, naked, hooked to the IV. If your nicotine test come back positive, they will Take that IV up out your arm and send you home. They made it clear they're not playing. I mean, I don't smoke. I'm just saying. That got to suck for the people that do. But, yeah, so they also gave me this soap or whatever. It's called Chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine. Um, this is what I have to shower or whatever with. 
um, the night before I use half the bottle and then the morning of I use the other half. And then of course you can put on any lotion or anything like that. And then, so that all went well. My results and everything came back the same night. So that's why I was like, why did she rush me in here? You know, like the results were going to take a while when they literally all came back the same night, including the C-test. So whatever, but I'm like, cool, that's done, whatever. Fast forward to yesterday, which was Friday, which was the pre-op, um, the final pre-op class with the nurse. They gave us, um, let me see. So this is the little, uh, bind, surgery binder I put together. I don't know if this light, but I put this together and it just has all of, oh yeah. And I use some, um, uh, planner stuff here to separate it, but it got like all the information about the surgery and all that stuff in it. And we went over all that whole packet basically. And this was, um, it was Zoom, but it was a group thing. So it was a group, uh, thing. So we went over the whole packet and then we got to ask questions at the end and everything. And also, they prescribed us two things that we have to do the night before outside of the soap or whatever. They, she sent it over to the pharmacy and I actually had them picked up this morning. Um, and this one, is the patch is called I listen I do this kind of work and I laugh every time I'm on the phone with a member because when I have to say a name of medication because I be turning these up but it's called sc scopolamine I don't know y'all but anyway it's the patch I know if y'all watch these videos y'all probably see most of the time I see they do it the morning of the surgery they put it on you in the hospital but um, apparently we got to do it at 8 p.m. the night before we got to do both of these two things. This is the patch that goes behind your ear to help with nausea. And then this is a single pill that also you have to take at 8 p.m. the night before that helps with nausea. And it's called Apropentin. It's just one capsule you take it the night before. This little thing right here, y'all, was expensive. I had to find a good RX to make it 40 something dollars for this one pill because it was ridiculous. And I have insurance. Um, not good. But yeah, so I used a good RX on this one. This one wasn't that expensive. It was only about $14. But this one, so this, this we, after we take the shower, I guess, or make sure we don't get it wet if we shower after that. But 8 p.m., you put the patch behind your ear and then you take the pill. And it's supposed to help with nausea. So, yeah, that appointment went well. She, they went over how we're going to eat after surgery and all that stuff. What happens after surgery. All the way up to really like six weeks um, after surgery. And um, we were able to ask, ask, like I said, any questions. I had a few, but not really. I don't even remember what they were. Probably something I already asked because I, I've been asking questions since the beginning. So, I didn't have much. Um... Let's see. Oh, but yeah, in a, not in the middle, but in that class, like I said, it was Zoom. So I was sitting here at my desk because I have my laptop right here, like always. I get a phone call. I step up to answer it. Yes, Ebony. Yes. This is such and such a from blah, 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 anesthesiology. Yes. Yeah, I see they moved your surgery to February the 5th. I said, no, ma'am. It was always February 5th. It wasn't moved. That was always the date. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I'm calling because we need to get you scheduled for your C-test. I'm like, oh, no. I did that. I did that the other day. The results are back and everything. Oh, well, it has to be within three to four days of your surgery. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Before I knew it, I said, oh, hell no. And then myself was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, you get more sugar, whatever the saying is. You get catch more bees with honey than boo-boo, whatever the saying is. So I'm like, I'm sorry, but no, 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 no. No, no, no. Somebody from there is the one that called me and scheduled that last appointment. They told me that I could not wait any later. Somebody needs to speak with her because I specifically asked if I could wait late, if I could do it another day 
she wouldn't even let me do it later that same day. My schedule was never changed. She saw the date in the beginning. I'm not doing that test again. I'm not doing that test again. Y'all are not going up my nose again. I'm sorry it's not happening. Oh, well, I'm like, y'all, I don't know if y'all calls are recorded. I, whoever that is, y'all need to talk to her. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not doing that over. Now, call me dramatic. Call me a baby. Call me whatever. But that thing, that test is horrible. And you're not going on my nose again. I'm sorry. Now, I wasn't all like this, like that with her. But I kind of was. Because I was adamant about not doing that test again. Like... But anyway, so she was like, well, let me speak to the head of the anesthesiologist. And um, if I if I don't call you back, then there's there's no no issue or whatever. If I call you back, then they're, they're giving me a problem or whatever she said. So I'm like, OK. So I'm like mad, but praying because Lord knows I want to take this test again. But truthfully, I know I ain't going to let it stop my surgery. But come on now. That's on them. That's not my fault. So she was like, um, I mean, so about an hour later, I guess it was, they called me and they were like, um, Ebony, I'm like, yes, uh, this is Judy or something. I don't remember her name, but this is one of the nurses that you saw, you know, at your appointment the other day. I was like, yes. She was like, how are you doing? I was like, that depends on what you're about to tell me. And so she was like, do you want some good news? I'm like, absolutely. So she was like, um, Dr. Such and Such, a, you know, he said he will not make you take the test again. But we have to be sure that you're self-isolating. I said, y'all have my word. I don't even go nowhere. And I really don't. I never have company. I don't go nowhere. I work from home. I probably told y'all this before. Like, that's why my gas lasts literally a tank of gas will last me a month or a month and a half because i don't really go anywhere i have no reason to for real um and i was like they had already told me that i needed to quarantine or whatever until surgery and a little bit after surgery anyway so i you know i was like y'all have my word i will not go anywhere because i will not do anything to jeopardize my surgery but i yeah so anyway thankfully Thankfully, they saw that it was they mess up and didn't make me pay for it. But I, whoo, I was like, no, 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 no. I don't care if it is a few seconds. That is not, that is, no. That's terrible. That's terrible. So anyway, that was that. That's done. So I was like, okay. Um, just so happy that I didn't have to do it again. Everything is done. She said she would notate my account that the attending physician, I don't know if he'll be the one there or what, but said I didn't have to do it again. I said, please notate my account because I don't want to have no problems when I get there for surgery that day. And she was like, you have my word. There won't be any issues and this and that. So I'm in the house, which doesn't bother me because I'm in the house anyway. I don't really go nowhere like I keep telling people. But I guess people who are not like that don't really understand. And she was like, well, don't have any company. I was like, I definitely never have company. I go places more often than I have company. So, so yeah, I was like, I just hope I don't have any issues. I'm still a little bit like, I be when I get there and know I don't have any issues, that'll make me feel so much better. But... For now, I'm just happy everything is done. Everything is completely done. And I'm just waiting on surgery, y'all. Now, y'all won't know how I feel. I'm excited. And I'm not as nervous as I was the day I got the date a couple days ago. But... I already know when it get here, I'm going to be low-key freaking out. I just need to be waking up. That's it. I just need to be waking up. Like, yeah. I just need to be waking up. I need to be over that. Like, it's not stopping me from sleeping and stuff. Like I said, I was super. When she gave me that day, I mean, literally breaking out in the sweat. I'm like, it is here, y'all. It's here. I can't, I can't 
can't even believe it, truthfully. Like, I'm not the type of person that takes any type of risk, truthfully. Um, I don't think I've ever done anything that really, really, really takes a tremendous amount of faith. Um, I just got on the airplane for the first time last year. Which is something I actually said I would never do in life. Um, I'm just not typically a person that take risks. And this is a huge one, you know. Um, but it's worth it to me. So, But it's still that part of me that's like, me, I'm actually doing it. And I don't know if everybody feels this way. And if you've had surgery or whatever or going to have surgery, comment below and let me know if you feel that way like other people do things and you never imagine yourself doing them because it takes a lot of faith or you know I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say but I'm not usually that person and to be that person right now it's almost hard to believe but I'm just hoping and praying that everything go well. I have faith that it will. Um, and I'm just ready to be on the other side of it, y'all. So that's all I have for this video. Um, I'm actually going to record a few more videos. I do have... Um, I've, I've gotten everything I need for my liquid diet. Oh, really quickly, which I'll probably say it in that video. But yeah, I know I don't have to do a liquid diet. Um... We just have to do a 1400 calorie a day diet. And of course they want us to stay away from the bad stuff, fatty foods, fast foods, bad carbs, but they're not even really dictating anything other than 1400 calories. Of course you're supposed to use, you know, common sense. But um, I am trying to do semi-liquid. Like I'm trying to do a liquid diet. Like today all I've had is a sugar-free popsicle and, um, a protein shake and the reason that I not only do I want to shrink my liver for my surgery to be as safe as possible but I also want to start mentally preparing myself for the way I'm gonna to have to eat after surgery so I don't want to go from eating cuz 1400 calories is not hard for me because I don't eat a lot anyway so I don't want to go from eating eating basically um, or eating a nice amount of my regular amount of whatever and then all of a sudden I have to switch to nothing but liquids for two three weeks or whatever puree and all this stuff it'll be like five to six weeks before I'm back on regular foods and even then you all know it'll never be the same so I don't know what my body will tolerate we know I won't be able to eat nothing but a few bites um so I just want to start you know kind of mentally prepare myself for that too so that's the reason I'm trying to do this. But what I am doing is pretty much all liquids. And then I think I'm going to do just like a baked, some baked chicken for dinner. I'm not going to do any sides. Just a couple pieces of chicken maybe. And I'm going to try to do that every day. Um, so we'll see if I make it. But like I said, um, I'm going to record a couple other videos. Because there's some things I want to show you all. I don't have my bag packed yet. But I'm do everything early so it'll probably be back by the end of today or tomorrow so i'll show you all what i'm taking to the hospital which is not much i mean as far as i know we don't really need anything and i am claiming that i'll be home the next day so that's all for this video um i just wanted to let you all know that i got my day job <laughs> but uh thank you for watching and i will see you on the next video bye